Some of macOS features are obvious, but others not so. There is somewhere in the system waiting for you to use them. And some features will even turn your Mac into an iPhone, allowing you to make calls from it. So let's unveil the unknown and improve our macOS experience together. Come on, Neo, I will show you the matrix. Did you know about a feature that allows you to create a custom grid of app icons right in Launchpad? To do this, open the terminal, enter these commands one by one, and then press enter. The first command sets the number of columns and the second the number of rows. It's enough to replace X and Y with values you need. But if you overdo it, don't worry, this command will help you to return everything as it was. I also duplicated them in the description, so feel free to copy it. As it turns out, macOS, which is considered a closed operating system, can be customized quite flexibly. If you don't need extra sections in settings, you can easily hide them. For example, I don't need mouse settings. Go to the system preferences, go to view, click on customize, and uncheck groups of settings you don't need. And then just click done. You can have all your files messed up in the system, but with the next feature, you still will be able to access anything on your Mac. It's called the spotlight search. And you can access it in three different ways. Just click on this magnifying glass on your keyboard and this pop-up window will appear. You can press command plus spacebar or you can click on this icon in the status bar. And in the spotlight search, you can actually convert something. For example, currencies, Fahrenheit to Celsius, inches to meters, and so on. And you can actually do the same thing in the calculator app. Just enter a value, then go to conversion in the menu bar, open currencies, and select the pair you need. This calculator takes data from Yahoo servers. Okay, Neo, I have some cheat codes that will make your workflow so better. And I'm talking about shortcuts. Shortcuts is a new macOS feature and these shortcuts are deeply integrated into macOS and you can either create your own shortcuts manually or download cheat codes. In other words, scripts. By the way, you can find the shortcuts app using the spotlight search or in the launchpad menu. One example of a shortcut is the ability to close all applications at once except the one you need now. It can be useful to quickly unload RAM before a heavy process. For example, when you're going to edit a video in Final Cut, you can instantly close all other applications. But if you want a full video about shortcuts, then smash the like button. And I added my favorite scripts and links to download them in the description of this video. Okay, let me show you some features that are supposed to be known and used, but for some reason are ignored by many. A very useful tool in Finder is Smart Focus. Folders. In fact, you can use it to create a special search filter to get quick access to the most important information. To do this, just click New Smart Folder and configure it the way you like. Another must-have is Hot Corners. Hot Corners allows you to launch different actions just by placing your cursor in one of the four corners. For example, in my case, for the bottom left corner, I use lock screen, for the bottom right, desktop, so I can quickly move files from my desktop to an app and vice versa. For the top left, launchpad, and for the top right, mission control. Mission control is basically the place where you can create virtual desktops and another way to access it is by swiping up with three fingers. You can click on this plus icon and this will create a new desktop. You can swipe between desktops by swiping with three fingers left or right. This is very convenient. I use it all the time. The next one allows you to zoom all the way in on your Mac screen. To be able to do this, you have to go to System Preferences, Accessibility, zoom and then put a check mark on the first option. So now just hold command plus option keys and you can zoom in by pressing the plus key and zoom out by pressing the minus key. I think it's very convenient, especially while browsing the web. And you can go ahead and like smash the like button. Talking about web browsing, in Safari, you can create groups of tabs. For example, in one group, you can save a tab for booking airline tickets, a tab with reviews of hotels, entertainment, etc. In Safari, click the arrow next to the sidebar button, click the new empty tab group, enter the name of the tab group, then press return. Moreover, if you right-click on any of the tabs, you can pin the tab by clicking pin tab. 
obviously. Many websites do not allow you to download an image in the desired format. As a result, we have to somehow get out of this problem. Fortunately, you can do it easily in the new Mac OS. To convert an image on a Mac, you need to right-click, select Quick Actions and Convert Image. Then in the window, select the format and size of the image and click Convert to. And there is a similar tool that allows you to combine several images into one PDF file in just a few clicks. Select multiple images, then right-click and select Quick Actions. Then just create a PDF file. In the new version of macOS, you can quickly create a note thanks to the Quick Note feature. Just hover the cursor over the lower right corner of the screen, a small icon appears, click on it, and the interface for adding notes will appear. Now do whatever you want in this note. And you can now create tags in notes. They will allow you to quickly put things in order. To add a tag, you just need to type it down in a note. After that, tags will appear in your folders and you can quickly find certain notes on the topic you set. Surprisingly, very few people use the split screen feature in macOS, but it's actually very useful. You just drag one of the windows from your desktop to another app in the mission control and and boom, now you have two apps in one window. And by moving the middle line, you can make one window bigger or smaller. Very useful if you constantly use two apps at the same time. One feature that was a big surprise for me is some sort of a time machine in documents. Let's say you've created your screenplay, you don't like it, and you want to find a version you've created a few days ago. And you actually can. Go to File, Revert To, and Browse All Versions. And you will see an interface that looks like a time machine, and here you can see all the different variations of the document that you made previously. You can go to the one you need, hit Done, and Magic. And if you need to sign a PDF document but you don't have a printer nearby, you can create your own signature and sign it right on your Mac. Open a PDF document, click on this little pen, then this signature icon, create signature. You can do it with your trackpad, but it's much easier to open the camera tab and scan your signature. It will come out pretty accurate and now you can easily sign documents. Hooray. There is one shortcut that allows you to increase and decrease the brightness in small increments. To do this, press Shift plus Option plus Screen Brightness Controls and voila! Voila! We all know Control alt delete in Windows OS, but we get almost the same thing in Mac OS. Just press Option, Command plus Escape, and in this window you can easily force quit the apps. Very convenient. And you can empty your trash bin the same way. Just press Command, Shift plus Backspace, and the bin is ready to be cleaned. In the same quick way, you can rename several files at a time. All you need is to select several files, right click and select rename. This window will appear and it's pretty straightforward from this point. It surprises me how many people still don't know about this feature. I just look at their desktop and it's so messy. To clean this up, just right click and select use stacks. This intelligently creates groups of files and once you click on it, it expands and now you can see all of your files. If you work on several Apple devices at once or you don't have a monitor but you have another MacBook or iPad, then I have great news for you. Thanks to the universal control feature, you can combine several devices into one. Just go to System Preferences, Displays and open up Universal Control. Check everything and now do the same thing on your second device. Then this Add Display button will appear and from now you can extend or mirror your display. Display. In simple words, the second device acts as a second screen. Sometimes it can be very convenient. You can do the same thing using AirPlay and duplicate the screen of your iPhone on your Mac. Everything is very simple here. Open Control Center on your iPhone, click on the screen mirroring icon, and now you can see what is happening on your iPhone from your Mac. By the way, you can also enable this feature in the Control Center on your Mac, but only if you have another Mac or iPad nearby. If you know what team viewer is, then you don't need it anymore because you're a Mac user. There is a feature called screen sharing and you can find it using the spotlight search. Type in Apple ID of your friend's Mac, they will have to accept it and now you can control your friend's Mac. It's so simple. This is very useful if you need to help someone. You know, they got a virus on their computer and you can help them like so instead of calling, trying to explain the thing. You know, it's a nightmare. And you can also make and receive calls from your Mac. 
How? If you enable the feature on your iPhone, go to settings, phone, calls on other devices and turn on the devices you need. Now open up FaceTime on your Mac and you can make calls without touching your phone. And it's also pretty useful to instantly access a personal hotspot from your iPhone. It works even if you have it turned off on your iPhone. Just connect to it and it will automatically turn on. So technically you can have a mobile network and 5G right on your Mac. And guys, it's really hard to make tech reviews on a small channel like this. We have a team working on this content. So if you're getting value, smash the super thanks button and support us with a few bucks. And to find out even more about your Mac, check out the videos you see here. Smash the like button if this video was helpful to you and see you in the next one.